am Qing Huang, an assistant professor from the College of Media and International Culture. I also work as a vice director of the Office of Global Engagement at Zhejiang University. Today, I welcome you to the second episode of the Meet the Scholar series, uh, in which we invite distinguished young scholars at Zhejiang University to introduce to us about their career paths. And today, here, we are at the College of Biomedical Engineering and Instrument Science. And we are very honored and happy to invite Professor Dan Wu to join us on a very insightful talk about her pioneering work in the field of MRI. So welcome, Professor Wu. Thank you, Professor Huang. Uh, so this is Dan Wu from Zhejiang University, and I'm working here in this College of Biomedical Engineering and Instrument Science. Uh, in our college, there are many interesting research directions uh, like medical imaging, uh, medical sensing, and medical informatics, and also instrumentation. So uh, I am uh, working particularly in the area of magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI for short. And there are several uh, research directions running in my lab. Uh, so the, for the first one, we're uh, working on MRI acquisition techniques, trying to improve the image quality that we can get from the machine. For example, to improve its resolution, to improve its signal to noise ratio, or to enhance the sensitivity to certain diseases. Uh, this is uh, uh, research directions that I started uh, with in my PhD. And uh, another two newer directions, uh, one is MRI instrumentation. Uh, so I'm working on with United Imaging uh, to build like super strong MRI machines, uh, has a very high gradient strength that can help improve the resolution that we can get from the, uh, the, the, the data. Uh, and another direction is on medical image analysis, neural image analysis for a particular. So we are using large database, big data, to try to find out uh, something underneath the data we don't see using deep learning methods to uh, build like a uh, diagnostic model or to know the underlying mechanisms of uh, brain diseases. So that's uh, the three main directions. Oh, yes. that's yeah. really <laughs> impressive. And I think your research team and your work in the field of uh, clinical practice and in neuroscience is very pioneering. And I believe they can do a lot of good to uh, public health and uh, especially for the patients. Uh, you did your PhD mm -hmm. at Johns Hopkins University, yes, right? right. Mm -hmm. So back then, what motivated you to decide to pursue the field of MRI research? <laughs> it's a very uh, good question because it's a difficult choice, I think. Actually, I didn't start with MRI. In my undergrad here in, uh, uh, in China in, at Zhejiang University, I work on brain-computer interface analyzing brain signals to try to infer how our mind works so that we can control external devices, that's so-called brain-computer interface. That's a very interesting research direction. And uh, during my master period at, at JHU, I also working on brain-computer interface. The transition happens uh, when I do this uh, uh, lab rotation for my first year of PhD. So at Johns Hopkins University, or our department give a one year period for students to, to do a lab rotation. So can, they can be rotated to many labs, staying for like one month, two months, half a year, or the so entire So they can year. explore the topics right. they're really yeah, interested yeah, yeah, yeah. in. That, that's the mechanism, how it works. So I, I, I kind of rotated to uh, uh, this lab doing MRI, and I feel really attached to it because mm -hmm. It's physics is very, very interesting to me. So it's kind of uh, it requires mathematical and uh, physics background. And that's uh, something I, I think uh, it's uh, very interesting to me. And another important reason for me to change my research direction is that I think MRI is very clinically translatable. Mm -hmm. For MRI, you know, in like big hospitals, every day there's hundreds of patients going through MRI scans. Uh, if we can develop something useful, then the clinical translation would be very fast and rapid. So, um, as the PI of several important national and international projects, you must uh, spend a lot of time and energy to keep everything running. And meantime, I guess you have to spend a lot of time to do teaching, so how do you balance the work? How do you successfully manage so many things? Uh, actually, I don't have a good answer, I would say, because we only have so limited time. For me, uh, 
I think one thing is that I am kind of very focused. Mm. I only apply for the grants that I that I want to do. Of course, we need funding to keep yeah. the lab running, but uh, I'm kind of selective. I only do the things that align with my research direction. That is a good way to, to balance uh, your true interest and mm. also these uh, projects. Uh, and another thing is team working, I think. I met Professor Wu about uh, three years ago. Uh, at that time, I uh, don't know much about MI uh, because I'm uh, uh, I majored in ultrasound. Uh, at that time, Professor Wu is uh, well known in the uh, field of diffusion MI. I knew the uh, Professor Wu as soon as I entered the Biomedical Engineering College. Uh, I knew her as an excellent overseas professor, uh, and I also interested in MRI. And we want to use the new technologies to help the doctors and the radiologists to evaluate like the clinical conditions of the mothers and uh, their babies. Indeed, there are so many things I cannot handle by myself, and, uh, uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, we have built up uh, a team uh, we have like including me five faculties in, in my team uh, like postdoc researchers in my lab so they really helped me a lot each of the research directions that I talked at the beginning mm -hmm. there would be a leading faculty or leading mm -hmm. yeah, researcher uh, to help me build up the team mm -hmm. and do the regular regulation of the students projects yeah I think that's a very good way for us to work together to accomplish something big yeah. uh, I've learned that you are the mother of two kids so mm -hmm. as the mother of two kids how do you balance your work and life <laughs> <laughs> that's another tricky question <laughs> right uh, there's a well I think at some point, one has to sacrifice something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you said, I have two kids and they're both young. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of uh, restrict my time to uh, research. Mm -hmm. I will spend my entire weekend, mm -hmm. if I'm not traveling, <laughs> the, the weekend and also uh, nighttime. So basically, uh, I have to like put hard constraint my, on myself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, there's so many work. You, yeah. you always endless work. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's one thing. And within the limited time I have for my research, I have to be very efficient oh and very God. organized and have my priority, as I said, like also teamwork, etc. Yeah. So as a very successful and a distinguished young scholar, uh, what advice and suggestions do you have for the scholars and the students? I think uh, for biomedical engineering, uh, this particular uh, research area, I think the feature of BME is that it's very multidisciplinary. Mm. Like as you enter our college, you can see the words on the wall. Yeah, try more, more multidisciplinary research. So given this nature, I think one advice I would give to the young student is that try to be very open-minded. Mm. How the innovation comes, it has to come from something that you don't know. So I always like to talk to professors from other departments, mm. physics, mathematics, or even chemical departments to know what's going on in their research area. Then maybe I can bring something very new mm. to my research area. So I can kind of start something truly innovative. Know more outside of your uh, own area. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is uh, because uh, biomedical engineering, we are developing techniques used for biological or medical application. So the job you are doing has to have a very clean clinical goal. Mm -hmm. You have to know why we are work working on this, like the potential applications has to be clear. So talk to clinicians. They know the clinical question. Like I don't, do not know all the cancers. They are all very, very different. The clinical question has to come from them. But you have to really kind of know this nature of this clinical question to decide whether my technique fits this particular clinical question. If they're a good match, then maybe continue the collaboration around this route. Yeah. Do you have any personal observations or beliefs or habits that you think that have uh, contributed a lot to your success? Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, I think being a female scientist, uh, we are always very persistent 
Mm, yeah, I think that's something common within female scientists. Uh, that means like if you get into failures, you can quickly recover. For example, if I lose a grant mm -hmm. today, I will maybe be very, very sad at tonight. I cannot fall into sleep. But next morning, I will be full of energy and forget about what just happened. I think it's good to learn from the experience, but don't just regret over what you already lose. You're doing your research, uh, hardworking and also happy at the same, same time. So keep a good attitude and a correct uh, recognition of yourself. I think you must be a very resilient person. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Resilience is really an important and uh, great quality for anyone who tries to be successful mm -hmm. in any field. That's right. And also I think you have to be like relaxed. Oh, okay. Don't have to be tense about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, once you can slow down a little bit, maybe that gives you more inspiration <laughs> on your work as well. So work-life balance is also very important for healthy development of your personality. <laughs>